So today we'll talk about getting your library website ready for summer. Um, I know it's only April, but summer learning, I know you guys have already been working and planning for that. And I just want to kind of get ahead of the game, make sure your websites are ready to go for the summer season. So today we'll cover just a quick review of WordPress basics, things like logging in and just kind of an orientation to the uh, dashboard for folks who are new or haven't used WordPress since last summer. We'll talk about updating your hours and contact information on your website. Uh, we'll look at the events calendar, some summer learning graphics, and we'll also talk just briefly about Facebook and Google to make sure that you have information on those sites updated as well. So we logged into the website and we're here on the dashboard. This is what the WordPress dashboard looks like. There's a menu that runs across the top of the page and then there's a menu that runs down the side. And this is where you edit things like the content. So if you have an events calendar, um, you upload media like photos or your board documents, you can edit the pages of your site. So the home page, maybe you have a summer learning page. And then under appearance, we can edit the way the site looks. So with your theme and customizing that, adding widgets to the sidebar and editing the menu that runs across the top. So after you log in, I talked a little bit about the dashboard. You've got that left side menu with options for editing the content and the appearance of your site. Um, this is where you'll control everything from the way your website looks to the content that's presented on the site. The most important thing that I want to cover today um, was updating your hours and contact information. So when I was working on annual reports, I reached out to a lot of member libraries to help um, correct some answers in the report. And I had a hard time finding phone numbers on library websites. But your patrons come to your website and they wanna know two things. Is the library open? And then maybe I wanna call, right? And find out if my holds are in or what program's going on and get other information like that. So we wanna present that information clearly and easily accessibly near the top of the site. So we can see two examples here. Watkins Glen has done a great job putting their hours right at the top on the right hand side. When it's over in that right sidebar, they're using a widget um, so that it's on every page right in the same place their hours are up at the top. The Steel Memorial Library has this on their home page. So when you click, go to their website, right here at the top, they've got the name of the library, a photo of what the building looks like, their address, their phone number, and their hours for every day of the week, which is really helpful. Contact information should include at minimum your phone number and your street address, and then your hours should also be posted. But maybe you want to have your library email account there for patrons to reach out that way or a link to your Facebook page. Whatever you feel is important is what you should include and make sure it's easily accessible near the top of the page so patrons don't have to hunt for this information. The recommended events calendar plugin that STLS recommends for libraries to use is called the events calendar. Um, you can see the link to find that calendar on the screen here, here, but this is what it looks like if you needed to reinstall it. We talked briefly about how this does require PHP version 7.4. Most STLS websites need to be updated and the IT team is working on that. You can't update your own PHP IT staff. Do you have to do this for you? When you are, so you can still use the events calendar plugin and manage your events. And to do that on the dashboard in that left side menu, there's a tab called events and you can see it highlighted in blue in the photo on the right. When you hover on that, this little pop out menu will come up and you'll see the options events, add new tags, event categories, etc. To add a new event, you click on add new and then just follow the prompts to create a new event. If you have something like story time that happens at the same time every week or um, a chess club that meets every Friday, something like that. You can use a CSV file and upload those and just create the recurring event in an Excel sheet, save it as a CSV and upload that. And I'm happy to talk you through that process and provide a template for you to use. So next I'm gonna talk about the summer learning graphics. So hopefully everybody has seen the summer learning manual either online or in print or on the thumb drive rather. Um, if you need access to it, the web address is here in the slides and then the access code is also posted. I'll just take a moment to bring us into that um, so that we can see what it looks like where these graphics live. So it's cslpreads.org. And then to get there, we go to manual downloads 2023 all together now. So then we can look over here on the left hand side when you're logged in at the all together now theme. They've got additional content, art media graphics sorted by age group, by material type. Um, the calendar and then the full manual. So I looked at art and media graphics and downloaded a few of these zip files to get things like the Facebook banner and some of these graphics. 
um, that I think are, you know, it's nice that they provide something that has a universal theme for all of us to use. So when I'm imagining using these, these are the banners. I think that those would look great across the homepage of your library website. We want to let folks know that summer reading is happening. Um, this looks consistent across multiple libraries. So if they use multiple libraries, they'll be familiar with the theme and what the graphics look like. So this is four different banners all put together here on the slide in front of us, but you can just choose one of them. I think it's a great idea to pick a summer learning themed graphic from the manual and post that on your library website. These graphics here on the slide on the right hand side are also from the manual from the website I just showed you. So I would recommend, you know, you can use these graphics when you create events in the events calendar. You can set a featured image and include an image. So you, if any of these or other graphics that are available feel appropriate for an event that you're organizing, you can include them. Um, add your graphics to pages about summer learning on your website. So when you're designing, hopefully you've got a page that's dedicated to summer learning on your library website. What's going on? What events are available? What's the theme? Um, who can register? What are the prizes? Stuff like that. And then you can use some of these graphics along inside of with the text to make it more eye catching. I also recommend updating your Facebook profile photo and your header using summer graphics or some kind of summer theme. Um, I change the STLS Facebook banner and the profile photo at least four times a year when the season changes. It just keeps our users engaged and, um, you know, folks get excited when the season's changing. And it's fun for me to put something new on Starcat and have him look festive and cute depending on the season. Uh, these banners are sized to be Facebook headers. You saw it when I was on the manual page, they specifically had a Facebook header file. So you can download and then up, add them to your Facebook header like this. You just upload them and move it around and then hit save changes and then you can update your Facebook header. Also within Facebook, I recommend updating the about section. So you wanna make sure if you've inherited your Facebook page from someone who was previously working on it at the library, maybe it hasn't been checked over in a while, just look under the about section and make sure that your address, phone number, hours, all of this basic contact information is still up to date. Is your web address correct? Um, do you have an email address for the library that you want people to use to contact you? This is another place to make sure all of that information is accessible and up to date. You never know what your patron's preferred method of finding information is, but it's probably either the library website, your Facebook page, or your Google profile, which we'll talk about next. So just making sure that you've targeted each of those three places and updated the information within them so that anywhere your patrons go, they're getting accurate information about the library. So creating a Facebook event is a good idea, especially for any big ticket events. So if you've got musicians coming or the bubble man or somebody, a big program that you're really excited about, um, creating a Facebook event can be a good way to really spread the word about those. So um, you just click on the plus button up in the top right hand corner of the Facebook profile and I can show that to you in just a moment. Um, and then you'll see the option to create an event. And then over on the right hand side when we're creating an event, you can add a special header image, uh, give the event a name, add the start time, things like that, and then give all the information. You can also pay if you want and you have the budget to do that, you can pay to boost this promotion of the event. But even just creating the event allows people to share that information more easily. Um, and it also advertises it to folks that are on Facebook and following you in a different way. Um, if I wanted to edit the cover photo, just in case anyone's not familiar, there's a button over the cover photo here on the right hand side that says edit cover photo. When I click on that, I can select something that already exists or upload from my computer. And then for my profile photo, there's a little camera icon over Starcat here. If I click on that, it will allow me to update my profile photo too. For creating an event, if I go up in the top right hand corner, I can see my little account icon, the notifications, messenger, and then this plus button. So if I click on the plus under create, coming down here, the word event pops up. And then if we click on event, it will open this little window for me to create an event. And that's where I can edit this cover image. I can make it a photo of the bubble man or the program that I'm having. Um, or just pick one of the summer learning graphics and then add all the relevant details and then create that event so that folks will see it. So I mentioned your Google profile. So Google uses something called your Google card. Um, so if you Google your library or STLS, you'll see on the left hand side of the Google search, a lot of links and results will come back. And then on the right hand side, there will be this square shape with information specific to the business. And that's called the Google card. 
So I recommend Googling your library and checking out the information that comes up in this Google card. Is it correct? Is it relevant to your library? Are your hours and things like that correct? Um, making sure that everything here looks accurate because folks will Google your library and hope to find the phone number or the hours and know if you're open. And you wanna make sure that that information is relevant. There's nothing worse as we all know than Googling a place and you see that it's open and you get there and they're actually not and their hours aren't correct. If it is the case that when you check this information and it's not correct, you have the power to edit it. It just takes jumping through a couple of hoops because they don't want just anyone to be able to edit your library hours willy-nilly without permission. So you can say, a patron could say, suggest an edit, and they could say, hey, I think the hours are wrong for the library, and that would be submitted for review. But you as directors or staff at the library can work with directors to claim ownership of the business. And when you do that, it'll ask you to sign into your Google business profile. And if you don't have one, you'll have to set it up. So if we Google the Southern Tier Library System, this is what comes up. Thankfully, our website comes up first, which is what we want. And then over on the right hand side, we can see this Google card. So it's got our name, a couple of reviews, um, our address, which is correct, our hours of operation, phone numbers here. This is where I would, a patron or anyone from the public can suggest an edit to this information. But then we as STLS, we've already done this, but we can claim ownership of this business so that we can make edits. Like if we're closed for a holiday, I can submit that information. So if I click on own this business, it's letting me know that somebody else has already claimed this business. But for you, if no one has claimed it, um, you'll have the opportunity to sign into your profile. And then if someone else does own it and you don't know who that is, then you'll want to follow this account recovery help guide or request access because if you're the director or you're on staff and your director hasn't claimed access or ownership rather, um, you might want to figure out who has ownership to this page. Maybe it's a past director, maybe it's a board president, but making sure that you can take control of this information and that it's not somebody out in the wild who's claimed ownership of the library's business page. So that is a quick rundown of everything I had for you guys today. And I hope that this was a little bit helpful. Are there specific questions that I can address about concerns you have around getting your sites ready for summer?